Hi, my name is Mark Fontaine and you are listening to a special episode of the Service Design Show. In our recent episode, we introduced you to an exciting new conference, Advancing Service Design. We heard from Lou Rosenfeld himself about why this conference is so important. Today, we are diving even deeper into advancing service design with Sylvie Abukayer, who played a key role in shaping the conference program. You'll get all the ins and outs about the two main themes of the conference, designing within the system and designing around the system. We also talk about the challenges of curating a conference that got over 120 speaker submissions. And just like in the episode with Lou, there's that special discount code for Service Design Show listeners. So stay tuned for the details. And now let's get right into it. My name is Mark Fontaine and you are listening to the Service Design Show. Sylvie, uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, we've spoken to Lou in a previous episode. And of course, I am. we are really, really curious to know, like, what is your specific role in the conference team, knowing that Lou is involved, Petra Quattlebaum, Ben Reason, like, where do you fit in? Yeah, so I am wearing many hats with this conference. I'm part of the curation team with Ben and Patrick. Um, wasn't part of the team from day zero, but have been in for the past couple months. Um, I'm also giving one of the workshops, so I'll be facilitating a workshop on systems practice and making system systemic thinking more accessible to service designers. So that'll be after the main part of the conference. Um, and I was also one of the reviewers on the CFP, so sort of everywhere <laughs> <laughs> you're everywhere and uh from uh if my sources are correct uh you know a lot about the specifics of the program about the speakers uh is that right yeah so i've been so ben and i have been facilitating the sort of day two of the conference and patrick has been the lead for day one but we've all been having our curation calls and touching base with one another and working to make sure the program fits together nicely Cool. So uh, that's why we're doing this specific episode with Lou. We uh, mostly talked about the conference experience, like sort of the philosophy behind the Rosenfeld conferences in general. Today, we want to get more specific and talk about advancing service design and uh, who's there and uh, what we can expect. So before we dive into the super, super specifics, uh, it's a two-day conference, right? Two-day yes, virtual correct. conference. Can you walk us through like on a high level how the conference is set up? Yeah, for sure. So two days virtually, exactly as you said, starting on December 3rd. Um, so December 3rd and 4th, starting at, I believe it's 8 a.m. Eastern time, Eastern time in the U.S. Um, and the first day will be about designing with systems. And the second day will be designing in systems. So we're really thinking about how service designers can grapple with complexity and uncertainty and interdisciplinarity. Um, so designing with the system on day one, uh, we're talking about working with other sort of interdisciplinary teams, product teams, agile. It's really sort of a behind the scenes view into how service designers are working within complex organizations, working within change and change management and alongside other practices in order to establish service design in a way that um, impacts the world around us and internally to those organizations. So we've got speakers from companies like Adobe and Airbnb, um, and a lot of great, really tangible takeaways for people to take back to their own companies. And then sort of day two, we're looking more broadly at complexity in the world. So designing in the system, a lot of sort of public sector healthcare focus on that day, um, thinking about how service design deals with the complexity of our societies and addressing sort of broader social challenges. Um, so speakers will go deep on that day into some of the kind of mindsets and tools that we really need in order to contribute to building a, a brighter and more equitable future. Nice. Sounds interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited already. Um, I, I'm really curious from uh, the process that you've been part of in curating the conference program. 
What do you feel was the most challenging part so far? I think the most challenging part was choosing our eight case studies. We had over, as Lou, I know, and the two of you spoke, um, we had over 120 submissions for just eight slots over two days. And honestly, it was really heartening to see how many amazing proposals we got, all the excellent work that's being done in this space, um, the really important questions people are asking. And to only select eight out of that was really difficult. There was a lot that I really wanted to dig into more. And if, you know, it could be an eight day conference, I think, um, and still maintain the same level of quality. Um, so that was, you know, that was the kind of narrowing down part was was tough. And now that we've got our speakers in place, I would say the the collaboration towards curating what the actual days will be like has gone quite smoothly. People are really excited and engaged. And um it's been it's been pretty smooth sailing. We've got a good team, honestly. Mm, that helps a lot. Uh and yeah. I'm still uh sort of uh interested in a behind the scenes look so can you take us to like what how did those conversations go about make going from 120 plus submissions to eight speakers like how did you how did you make those trade-offs yeah so the initial narrowing down was done by our reviewers we had i believe it was eight reviewers and they each reviewed something like 35 of the 120 or so proposals. So each individual proposal was reviewed by several reviewers. And we had a rubric uh, for, and, and each proposal was anonymous, right? So we wanted to make sure that it was an equi equitable process. We weren't looking for just the biggest names uh, to speak at this conference, but really wanted fresh perspectives and new ideas. And so uh, sort of anonymized review process where each reviewer was looking at a handful um, I'm sorry, each proposal was reviewed by a handful of reviewers. And our rubric that we had those reviewers use was aligned to kind of the goals of what the conference was looking for. So is it really pushing the boundaries? Is it really evolving our discipline and evolving the conversation about uh, how the discipline needs to evolve? And is it grappling with complexity? Um, and then we had a much more narrowed down list of um a certain number that uh, Ben and Patrick kind of took that list away and prioritized which ones sort of they thought would be most interesting and also which ones fit well together, right? Because we don't just want the eight most interesting ones if it doesn't tell a cohesive story and doesn't come together to create a really engaging program that reflects diversity of perspectives and ideas and practices. Was there alignment? Was there controversy? Was there, were there fights? Like... <laughs> How easy was it to come up with the final eight? You know, Mark, I wasn't part of those final discussions. Too bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, so maybe I missed out on some tug of war some between drama. Ben and Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, cool. I'm the the theme is advancing service design. Um, you have a background in this field as well. I'm really p curious from your personal perspective. What does advancing service design mean to you? So to me, it's really about taking inventory of where service design is and has been for the past couple of decades and rethinking the way we have conversations about service design and sort of conducting experiments about where we need to go next. Um, we are in an ever increasingly complex world and societies and communities. And I think some of the needs are more urgent than ever. So um, part of what this conference aims to do and what I think service design itself needs to do is reimagine the way that conversations are being had, right? So conversation itself is a core tool of being a service designer. And we really need to be thinking about who's part of those conversations and how we're showing up in those conversations in order to push the discipline forward. I would also say it's not just about human-centered design anymore. Folks have been saying for a long time, we need to be thinking about community-centered design. It's about equity-centered design, planet-centered design. In other words, system-centered design. And so how can we zoom out and think about all of the parts of the system that are coming together and how we are parts of those systems? Um, and so in order to grapple with that complexity, I would say we really need new tools and mindsets 
um, being willing to enter into ambiguity and uncertainty and to rethink how we fit in the current landscape of design and teams and, and organization and collaborations. This is a nice leeway and segue into uh, getting more specific about who's uh, the kinds of conversations we can expect at the conference. Uh, you just said we need different conversations. Yeah. Let's take day one, uh, designing in the system. Yeah. Who will be enlightening us, helping us to explore <laughs> what kind of conversations can we expect from day one? Yeah. So we've got um, Rebecca from Airbnb, and she's talking about kind of the messiness of creating a service design team and what's that what that has looked like. So she's really uh, sharing from a place of transparency and openness which I think when thinking about conversation design and the types of conversations we need to be having, to me, transparency is key, right? Not going out there and saying, rah, rah, we're amazing, uh, which Airbnb is, by the way, as, as with all the organizations that are speaking in the conference, but being willing to also have humility and to say, here's what we're not sure about. Here's the questions we're still asking. Here's what we did that didn't actually work out quite the way that we thought it would. Um, and so she's kind of giving us a behind the scenes look of what it's been like to build that team at Airbnb. Um, we've got Gina from Adobe speaking. She's bringing a really interesting perspective. So she's talking about the mindsets of a coach and a therapist and how service design can actually use some of those same mindsets um, in our practice to help people connect dots and, and um, really push conversation forward in that way. So it's almost like a sneaky way of um, bringing service design to people who might not have entered into that conversation prepared to prioritize um, some of the decisions or approaches that service designers would take. Um, we've got Carol and we've got Laura. So Carol's talking about designing for health and the way we need to uh, work sort of cross-disciplinarily to design clinical workflows in a way that's going to make sense for the people using them, but the ways in which internal complexity shows up and how they've really tackled that um, in her space. And then Laura from Unbox, Laura and Tom are talking about going beyond uh, the viable. So really, how do you build something in an organization that lasts? Um, and one of the key questions they're asking is how service design can take responsibility for the operational sustainability of the services they develop. So kind of not just being in there in the moment when design decisions are happening, but how can you think about the long term and really integrate with an organization? Um, and so that's more of a software focus. Oh, uh, the uh, the funny fact is that uh, both Rebecca and Gina uh, have been part of the Circle community, so I'm really interested to hearing oh, their stories. Uh, yeah, and I will be paying special attention uh, to that. Um, we didn't discuss that in detail, and before we dive into day two, like, what will this be? Presentations? Will this be workshops? Will this be panel sessions? Like, what's the format? The format for the case studies is a 20 minute presentation. They're, they'll be sharing their work and their own experiences. Um, so most of it is case studies, like here's an example of a project we did. Some of it is a little bit more methods focused, but drawing on really those practical examples. So 20 minutes um, and then Q and A, so pretty quick hits. Um, and we also have a panel each day and then there's an opening speaker, which is John Cutler, and who's sort of a product sort of cross-disciplinary complexity product design guy. And then we've got um, Josina closing us out on day two and really talking about how systems thinking needs to evolve in order for service designers to move to the next step of whatever our discipline uh, will be. So there, there is an opening keynote, there are case studies, there is a panel, and then there is a closing keynote, right? Yeah, there's a panel each day. Actually. Yeah, there's a panel each yeah. day. And Josina... Exactly. Uh, Josina Fink, we're talking, and funnily enough, Josina will be a guest uh, lecturer in the circle as well. So there are a lot of cross <laughs> ties and uh, overlaps yes. here. Um, okay, yeah. Was so was that a correct assumption? A keynote, four case studies, a panel, and then a closing keynote. Is that the setup? An opening keynote for the whole conference. Uh, so one key one keynote per day, four case studies per day, and the panel each day. Cool. And who's in the panel? So on day one, we've got John Mortimer 
We've got Millen uh, and Lucy, and that will be facilitated by Patrick Quattlebaum. Um, and then on day two, hold we've on, got... Hold on, Lu we're not at day two yet. <laughs> so we'll, let's close off day one. <laughs> so Patrick is going to uh, facilitate that panel. Um, and uh, like... What can we? I, I know we're drifting like left and right, but what can we? How yeah. how do we engage as uh, uh, as audience? Is it is there a chat room? Like I, I, yeah, you know, can we? How do we? Yeah. How do we Q and A? Like how do we do that? So there will be a Q and A, which will be facilitated by the conference organizers. Um, so anyone can kind of chat, type type a chat question in the in the chat, um, and. It depends sort of how many questions come in. We might have to prioritize and just get the first few. But the really nice thing about the Rosenfeld conferences is they've got their Slack community as well. So um, folks can chime in with questions after the fact and continue the conversation um, with the speakers and with one another. Cool. OK. So I think that's a pretty good overview of day one, designing in the system for case studies. John Cutler opening, Josina Fink uh, uh, as another speaker. Sure. Um, Josina's day, day two. Day two. Closing out day two. Closing out day two. Thank you. Uh, and I'm yeah. sure we can sort of uh, see the full detailed program also on the website, but we're trying yeah. to paint a mental picture here. Um, yeah. Day two is about designing with the system. Designing in the system um, was is day two. Uh, so, so, I, so what did I say about day one? Like, I think I said designing in the system is day one. I sort of, I, I think the language could work either way, depending <laughs> on how you think about it. So, but the way that I would think about it is uh, day one is really about internal organizations mm -hmm. and designing with the complexity of those organizations. So mm. things like creating a new service design team or using service design alongside other practices like agile and product development and change management. Whereas day two is zooming out and looking at the big world around us and all the complexity we're facing, solving complex social issues and deeply rooted systemic challenges. Um, so that's the one where we've got more public sector and healthcare. And, yeah, and take us through. Who, who can we see and hear on stage? Um, so we've got Stephanie from Nava, who's talking about transformation design. So she's uh, really advocating for a service design to consider the different levels uh, that we need to be designing for. So Nava is a public benefit corporation. They work on government design. Um, so she talks about sort of at the highest level, what are some, some of the big transformational questions that service designers can help answer all the way down to the nitty gritty of service delivery and and how service designers can be a part of that as well at, at sort of every level. Then we've got Alexia and Adrian from Pima County, Arizona. They are, so um, Adrian was at the Pima County Health Department at the time, and Alexia was at Dahlberg Design. And so it was a agency government collaboration. And it's really cool that they're both gonna be there to kind of speak from, from to that collaboration from both perspectives. And they were focused on equity around COVID vaccination uptake. So it's kind of going deep into that case study and how they developed a community of practice. So getting back to that conversation theme, right? Like this is another great example where they're thinking about how you actually design the conversation as a way to really design the outcomes themselves. And they talk about how their experience was creating this community of practice that then really changed what the outcomes of the project ended up looking like. Um, and then we've got Leishan Maria from Genomics England, um, really talking about the immense complexity that goes into something um, as complicated as sort of genomic health. And, and they're also talking about it from a quite technical standpoint. So they work a lot with the developers and they need to think about how to design for developers and create kind of the building blocks so that systems can actually talk to each other and ultimately people can get the care that they need, um, even if they're perhaps getting care in different systems or different spaces, which of course all of us do. Mm. And so those systems need to be able to talk to each other. Um, they also talk about sort of upskilling and being willing to get the skills necessary to at least speak the same language as some of those collaborators, for instance, the developers. Um, and that kind of brings up this bigger question of, well, what are the skills that service designers will need as service design advances? Um, and I think there's sort of the general skill set of service design, but then for some of these highly complex spaces, perhaps that there are these other sort of niche skills that are needed to understand um, enough 
to be able to participate in some of those implemental um, implementation decision implementation decisions or um, at least know what's possible, right? And then we've got Liz from The Honest, which is a small design studio, and she's talking about uh, a project she did in Uganda, looking at a small rural health clinic, um, and that project is really looking at a clinic that's failed people in many ways and looking at the systemic issues in that clinic through the eyes of a child. Uh, she talks about hope and hope as a sort of systems intervention itself. Um, and then we've got our panelists, Amanda, Luke, um, and Christian closing out the day for us. And then, of course, Josina talking about kind of myths and and um, practices in systemic design. I, I'm very interested to seeing the red thread throughout all these conversations because that's the thing sort of um, the signature of, of the conference, apparently, that there is a red thread throughout all these uh, conversations. Um, cool. So thanks for sharing. I think this gives a pretty good overview of the two days, what we can expect. Now, if we go back to the title of the conference, Advancing Service Design, um, when you talk with the team about that title and that ambition, like, <clears throat> how do you hope this conference will advance or contribute to advancing service design? Yeah, I mean, I think the conference is a microcosm of the need to redesign conversation, right? So if we think about conversation design as one of the ways that we can advance service design, this conference is being quite intentional about the way that we curate that conversation, who we invite to that conversation. You know, we've got people from all different sectors working in all different spaces. And uh, we've also got people who are working, you know, under the title of service design in quite well-established teams with a lot of design maturity. And we've also got people who don't even label themselves as service designers, who are working in complexity, who are working in healthcare or government, and are bringing a perspective that comes from outside of our field to help challenge and balance really the perspectives that uh, we might have internally as service designers. Um, so I think having that diversity of perspective is key and having um, the conversation in a way that's willing to hold space for uncertainty and humility and transparency and asking as many questions as we claim to be able to answer. I don't know if we can answer that many uh, things, exactly. but at least we can uh, try to ask better questions. So uh, something that just popped into my mind is that while you were going over the program, I missed a name and it might be uh, because I wasn't paying clear attention, but um, I think you're also doing something at the conference, right? So I'll be giving a workshop. So we've also got the four workshops, which are not part of that two day program, but are happening later in the month in December. Mm. Um, so yes, I will be giving a workshop on how to make systemic analysis and systems thinking more actionable um, and more practical for service designers. So a little bit less academic, a little bit less ethereal and something that people can really um, get into and utilize in their day-to-day -day work in a way that doesn't reduce the complexity, right? Because of course that would defeat the purpose, but allows people to really visualize the complexity and feel empowered to take action within um, the system that they're part of and that they're hoping to change uh, without sort of being frozen in analysis paralysis. And we've got three other great uh, workshops as well, which I'd happy to share share how, how are the works uh, are the workshops linked to the conference or are they really a separate thing so they're linked to the conference but they are an optional add-on um so they're not part of the core program um but when one is what registering for the conference uh, you so can what also yeah what are the these. other three yeah so um I'm putting you on We've the spot got... so i i it's the, it's totally fair that you have some notes because there's so much <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's so much going on. So what do your notes yeah. say about the other three workshops? <laughs> so we've got Radical Participatory Design with Victor Udeoa. Who was also uh, on the show. Got, yeah. Yeah, he's all over the place and he's just an amazing guy. He's doing some really good thinking around how we can better engage communities in a way that's sustained um, and uh, less transactional, less transactional and more equitable. 
And then we've got Aisha uh, giving a workshop on impactful service design. Uh, we've got my workshop from systems thinking to systems doing. And then we've got Sean Mortimer uh, uh, giving a workshop on systems thinking for service designers. So really making the case for why systems think thinking is important in service design. The word system uh, comes up often <laughs> around this it conference. Does. So <laughs> Uh, let's see if that also sticks throughout uh, the uh, conversations. Cool. Um, I'm really curious. Like, uh, this must be a lot of work to put this together. Uh, I, I, I've organized some conferences, so I know uh, how much time and dedication goes into it. And often it's quite challenging and the it's uh emotionally draining but what do you feel was the most fun part so far i think the most fun part is engaging with the speakers themselves people are so engaged so curious they're uh, providing one another comments and feedback and really thinking about the connections between what they're speaking about and i think helping one another's talks be better as a result but also advancing the conversation. And I again, I, I just think that this collaboration process itself is a microcosm of really the world of service design that we, we hope to create, right? It's one where people are showing up with this balance of bringing their experience and expertise and also bringing really good questions and curiosity and listening and transparency. Um, and it's inspiring. It really is to hear the work about the work they're doing and to be able to start to make some of those connections. What, what are your hope um, everybody who will be attending walks away with after participating in the in the conference. I hope and and I believe that folks will be walking away with some really practical tips and tools that they can apply to their own contexts. Um, and I also hope that they walk away with some new questions that they want to follow up on or ask of their communities so that they can start to shift not only the tools and practices of design, but really the mindsets that they're bringing. Because I think it's in that mindset shift that we start to, over time, see cultural shift and evolution of, of the discipline. Let's see if that actually starts to happen. Um, is there anything else you feel we should have addressed uh, about the conference that we haven't done so far? So something else as I was reflecting on like, what does it mean to advance service design and what are some of the themes coming up in this program was around visibility. Uh, so visibility is a systems design principle. It's quite simple and common sense, but perhaps underutilized, um, whereby making something visible, and this has been done in aviation and in healthcare, by making something visible, um, people can grapple with it, right? People can start to see it, start to have a collective understanding of, of what it is and start to make change. And in a, in a safety sense from a systems design perspective, if you can't see something, you're likely to forget about it, then maybe uh, there's an error that happens that causes harm, which is that sort of aviation or healthcare link. But visibility is such a foundational part of classic approach to systemic design, which, as you said, is one of the core themes of the conference. It's why mapping is such a commonly used tool in both service and systemic design so that people can actually feel what, what the system's dynamics are and see them and connect with one another. So I see visibility as a core sort of tool of service design to be able to visualize the dynamics as a way of connecting with one another, as a way of telling stories, as well as, well as connecting to ourselves and our intuition and our humanity. Um, and it's also, at the same time, this really important sort of systems design principle from a more technical standpoint, right? So we've got sort of the soft skill of visualization as well as the sort of more evidence-based robust tool of how, how we might bring visibility into a system. And I think, that's a thread that's also showing up a lot um, in the sort of talks and the different ways that people have found to help people see and understand complexity through the power of visualization and, and storytelling. Um, and then related to that, I think there's this theme of balancing the softer skills of design, the curiosity, the listening, the hope, as Liz talks about. Um, my, my systemic approach talks a lot about kindness, um, which has that sort of soft, fluffy side, but also that hard edge of evidence, right? 
and intuition, but also what are the technical skills that we need to be able to, you know, as we were talking about, have those conversations with, say, developers or know what's possible. Um, and so how do we balance the different soft and hard skills that we might need? Um, so I think, yeah, I think those are some threads that are that are really interesting and that are coming out in different bits and pieces across the, the two days and in the workshops. Making the invisible visible. Um, interesting. Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. Uh, I couldn't agree more that that's a key characteristic skill thread of, um, of design. Um, so yeah, looking forward to how this will uh, materialize in the uh, conference itself. Now, uh, let's assume that we are excited about joining, visiting, watching, seeing everything around the conference. Um, when is it happening exactly again and how can we get our tickets? Yeah, so it's happening on December 3rd and 4th of this year, just under a month away. 2024. The tickets... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 2024. Um, the tickets are available on the Rosenfeld website. I believe it's rosenfeldmedia.com. And um, the workshops are happening at various dates in December. They can also be booked through the Rosenfeld website, uh, but they're separate from the conference that's happening on the 3rd and 4th. Nice. So December 3rd and 4th, 2024, you start at 8 a.m. Eastern time. So in Europe, that's going to be afternoon-ish. I think London around 1 yeah. p.m., something like that. Yeah, exactly. Right. 1 p.m. London, 2 And what time do you Europe. stop? Like, what's the last session? So the, uh, we'll be wrapping up by 2 p.m. each day. So that's eight, um, <clears throat> 7, 8 in the evening, is, Europe. Exactly, yeah. And after that, there is some service design community stuff happening, but the main conference program ends at that time. For anyone who's made it so far, there is a discount code for all uh, the service design show viewers, audience, listeners, whatever you want to call yourself. Uh, check the show notes. It's a 10% discount. Uh, you need to answer a very simple question to get your hands on it. Uh, no strings uh, attached. And we're doing a contest. I wasn't able to announce that in the conversation with Lou, but we're also doing a contest to give away some um, fun prizes. So check out the show notes, uh, how to get your hands on that stuff. Um, Cool. Sylvie, uh, you've made me excited about the conference. I'm definitely going to uh, at least watch a few sessions. Uh, maybe I'll also participate in uh, doing a session myself, but that's uh, that's a small secret. Um, so looking forward to seeing you back on December 3rd and 4th. Yeah, Mark, thanks so much for having me. It was great to chat with you and we're really looking forward to see what comes of all this. All right, thanks. It was a great peek behind the curtains. Hope you gained a lot more insight into the advancing service design program and the careful and thoughtful process behind it. Don't forget to check out the show notes for all the relevant links, including details on how to get your discount code for the conference. And if you haven't listened to the episode with Lou yet, make sure to check it out as well to gain an even better understanding of what you can expect from advancing service design. My name is Mark Fontaine, and I look forward to having you with us again for a brand new conversation on the Service Design Show. Take care and see you soon.